Hi, I'm Greg Murray for the Holland Climate Collaborative with some brief thoughts about climate change and the prevalence of vector-borne diseases. I'm also a professor of biology at Hope College and a tropical ecologist by training. Here in the Great Lakes region, we're expecting temperature increases of about three and a half to six degrees Fahrenheit by 2070, as compared to the 1971 to 2000 period, if emissions of greenhouse gases continue to rise as they have been. In our area, the prediction is for about four to five degrees Fahrenheit. Some of the direct consequences of that temperature increase will be heat stress in people and animals from increasing frequency of extreme heat events or heat waves, but there are some serious indirect effects for human health as well. Here's just one example. This is an animation of the current and projected range of the mosquito that carries a number of different viruses in addition to malaria and yellow fever, represented in terms of the number of months per year that that species could transmit the disease based on the climate at that place and time. Now, as you can see, as the climate warms, the range of the mosquito and hence the potential range of the disease extends farther and farther from the tropics into North America and Europe. Similar projections for other species of mosquitoes that carry the Zika virus, dengue fever, and other vector-borne diseases are similar, and in a lot of cases, they're even worse. The longer growing seasons and shorter, warmer winters are likely to change the prevalence of tick-borne diseases too. And there are quite a few of those right here in North America. This map, for example, from the CDC compares Lyme disease cases in the Eastern US in 2014 with that in 1996. There are probably several factors involved here, but one is certainly the warmer winters that increase survival of ticks and their hosts. Now, these are just a few of the more likely effects of climate change for human health. And remember that those effects are always most severe for the people who have the least ability to protect themselves, people in developing nations or people of limited financial means right here in the US. Now, this is what the best science available tells us about the way the future is going to be. But we can make a real difference in the lives of those who come after us if we take responsibility to combat climate change now. These are some good sources of reliable information on climate change written in a way that one doesn't have to be an expert already to follow. They provide a lot of references for people who want to dig a little bit deeper into these topics too. You can learn more about the local effects, uh, or local efforts rather, to cut greenhouse gas emissions here in the Holland area by seeing the Holland Climate Collaborative's webpage or our Facebook page. Thanks, and please feel free to share this video widely.